Cuba in the 1960s experienced a decade of revolution. During the presidency of Fulgencio Batista, radical socialist militia movements across Cuba joined forces to oppose the existing administration, as it was too closely tied to the United States and threatened the island's autonomy. Cuba after the revolution, under the leadership of Fidel Castro and the successful rebels, came to represent an ongoing fight against imperial power. The nature of this revolution can be seen as a revolutionary process, extending beyond the military overthrow of the government and leading to an attempt to fundamentally change society. Though the military aspect of the Cuban Revolution officially ended in 1959, the themes that promoted government overthrow endured throughout the following regime. The Cuban Revolution was a revolutionary process sparked by the overthrow in 1959 and continuing throughout the 1960s. Common themes of tense US-Cuban relations, popular support for the Castro regime and fundamental societal change fueled the lasting nature of the revolutionary process and allowed it to remain the focus of the Cuban government throughout the decade. The relationship between Cuba and the United States has been one of turbulence and tension, fostering a pattern of anti-American sentiment that permeated throughout the Castro years. President Fulgencio Batista was supported by the U.S. government as he displayed familiar, capitalist-oriented goals amid the brewing socialist ideologies of the militias who opposed his rule. The United States viewed Cuba as a back door, and in the context of the Cold War, the island was the closest potential threat to U.S. capitalist power. The U.S. feared the possibility of Cuban socialist movements gaining enough power to directly impact the United States. This distanced the two countries on an ideological level, and Cuban citizens began to see the United States as an entitled authority and a disruption to Cuban autonomy. Despite Cuba's socialist threat on the capitalist superpower, the United States was Cuba's primary trading partner in the early days of the revolutionary movement. This fact created an integrated pattern of economic reliance that affected Cuba even after Castro's rise in power, as the Cuban economy increasingly relied on the support of the USSR. Cuba's prosperity as a sugar island invited U.S. economic expropriation under Batista, who enacted legislation that limited Cuban prosperity in the sugar industry for the benefit of the U.S. Economic factors contributed to the rise of Castro and other militias over Batista's rule and influenced the economic shift to socialism during the revolutionary process. The Cuban population viewed America as the perpetrator of economic trouble as it impeded the island's autonomy. The image of a hostile America in Cuba only grew throughout the 1960s as the decade gave way to American intervention in the Bay of Pigs to halt Cuba's socialist shift, as well as a trade embargo that solidified the increasing distance between the two countries. During the 1960s, the Cuban revolutionary process exhibited a theme of anti-American ideology embraced by the public, allowing the continuity of revolution for the duration of the decade. Cuba's independence in 1908 was greatly undermined as those who fought against Spain were massacred by the Cuban government that was backed by the United States. President Fulgencio Batista first came into power through a military coup in 1933. After a few successful years as president, Batista left for the United States after his popularity plummeted. Returning in 1952, Batista took part in another military coup to get himself into power. His government had close political ties with the US, meaning he allowed them to take advantage of Cuba's commerce. Batista was an extremely corrupt leader. He aligned himself with members of the Italian and Jewish mafia who controlled drugs, gambling and prostitution rings. His regime significantly worsened the living conditions for the poor in Cuba. The Batista regime was the perfect environment for the Cuban Revolution. His corruption and US ties provided a fertile ground for Fidel Castro and anti-government organisations. The success of the Cuban Revolution can be defined as being a distinct break from the old, corrupt government, but also from the paternalistic treatment from the United States. Civilians in Cuba felt that the revolutionary process was a beacon of hope from the constant repression that they had faced. This helps to explain why the revolution is still prevalent today. In Che Guevara's letters to Carlos Quijano, Guevara states that to build communism, a new man must be created simultaneously with the material base. Che Guevara's approach to the ideal concept of the new man was based on his belief that Cuba was made of two masses, the elite or the educated mass, and the rest were the uneducated and ignorant in his eyes. Guevara believed it was up to the elite, such as himself, to educate the ignorant mass on the ideal political constructs in order to revolutionize Cuba by using Eastern Europe's methods of constructing a socialist country. Guevara's idea 
of the archetypal new man was a young, upright, revolutionary student. Yet the initial problem with creating the new man and warping the habits of the working man all into the same mold it was that man himself did not want to be put in the mold. And although the revolution promised a way of liberation to all cu Cuban citizens, the new man ideology caused the opposite effect on Cuban women. New man was a dominating patriarchal force that caused tension amongst the working class as many women were driven out of their jobs. Perhaps the reason behind the fall of the new man was the social inequality that came out as a consequence. Instead of considering the Cuban Revolution as a singular event ending in 1959, the revolution became more of a process that endured throughout the 1960s. The continuing anxiety towards the United States, the popular aspect of the regime, and the societal revolution defined by the new man allowed for the revolution to become a process. The Cuban Revolution can also be used as a window into common themes existing within the entirety of Latin America. U.S. involvement is a common issue in the region as the United States has enacted extractive policies, taking advantage of Latin American prosperity. The U.S. exhibited an entitled form of authority that steals from Latin American autonomy and disrupts economic and political structures. Furthermore, a common Latin American theme of popular uprisings challenge corrupt and repressive governments. Another pattern of Latin American conflicts is the struggle between two forces, the elite and the working class, as an attempt to form a controlled revolution which is embodied within the new man ideology of the Cuban Revolution. The idea of a revolution as a process, rather than as a singular event, sums up the actions of Cuba in the 1960s, and the themes that caused this type of revolution are common themes, prevalent in the context of Latin America as a whole.